Hello everyone, welcome to Lethal's Tactical Concepts. In this video, we are going to go through some features about Argus BMW 1431 housing and upgrades added in the Mark II version. For those who do not know, the Argus 1431 is basically a direct copy of the L3 PUS31, but modified to accept more commonly available PUS14 optics. The housing kit includes everything you need except for the tube and optics to complete a night vision goggle system. On this side is my personal BMW 1431. This is the Mark I version. This one has the Mark II pods installed because modularity and these tubes on the side are actual Mark I pods. On this side is the current production Mark IIs. As you may have heard, the Argus BMW 1431 are made in China, but don't mix this up with the modified FMA airsoft crap a couple years back. These are made of injection molded nylon and high quality electronics. In the packaging, we have the housing itself with some rings installed from the factory. We also have the tube retainer ring, the light pipe, six set screws for the infinity focus stop, and a pair of coil rings if you want to attach retention cords with bigger hooks. Both the 1431 Mark I and Mark II articulates just like the original PS31. They also have the same IPD adjustment as the original PS31. Neither Mark I nor Mark II have the individual pod shutoff feature like some of the other offerings have. But both of them do have the accelerometer switch built in. If you flip the unit up over 90 degrees, it will automatically shut off. And if, if you flip it back, it will turn back on immediately. Furthermore, if you leave your unit static for more than 3 minutes, it will also auto shut off to prevent your tube from permanent damage. Though I would not rely on these features to protect my tubes, proper night vision goggle operation process is still relevant. You can turn both features on and off by pressing the button 5 times. The LED inside will also blink 5 times for confirmation. To power it up, you will need one AA battery, 37 volt 14500 rechargeable battery, or you can use the auxiliary battery pack, which plugs right into the fissure connector on the side of the bridge. The housing takes industry standard PS14 optics, which makes it a great option if you want to upgrade your bridged dual PS14 system. All you need to do is to transfer the tube and optics to the housing and everything else is, is included in the housing kit. Argus also makes a battery pack. It comes with the battery pack itself and the cable. This battery pack is a perfect replica of the PVS31 uh, battery pack. It comes with a cable with fissure connectors. It takes two or four AA batteries and it has built-in IR strobe. My Mark I has served me well in the past 3 years. In my opinion, it was more like a pre-production prototype and it was sent out to multiple users across the world for feedbacks and I got a chance to buy one and I paid in full. The Argus took some advice from people like WF1 system and Upward Night Solutions and made some improvements in the Mark II. As far as I know, the Mark II production was greatly delayed due to the current pandemic and they just finished tweaking the specs and started shaping in the late January 2022. This one is the current production Mark II that I just finished building for my partner. Now, let me go through some improvements and differences between the Mark II and Mark I. Here are the external differences from top to bottom. The biggest difference on the bridge is this 1531 style IR flood illuminator on the front of the bridge. The Mark II also has the new style dovetail on the top of the bridge engraved with the serial number and the Argus logo. You may notice the epoxy on the front of the switch is missing on Mark II. And also, if you look at the back of the bridge, the articulation tension screws are glued in place, possibly to prevent the people from messing with it and end up breaking the seal or stripping the screws. The articulation from the factory is nice and stiff. The tension is a lot stronger than the Mark I in its factory setting when I first got it. These parts are not going anywhere unless you want them to. The Phillips head screws 
used to keep the body together and connecting the paths to the bridge on the Mark 1 are kind of soft. They are now replaced by the properly hardened hex screws on the Mark 2. The IPD stop now have slightly longer screws for a better range of adjustments. The skeletonized parts on the Mark II looks very different from the cylinders on the Mark I. However, they do not offer weight reduction as many people have thought. As I have weighed both, the skeletonized Mark II parts weighs about the same if not heavier than the Mark I parts. In my opinion, this design is more of a reinforcement over weight reduction. The aluminum Infinity Focus stop rings on the Mark I now have been updated to the color style rings, which holds the objective lens by itself, eliminating the need for a separate retainer ring, which greatly simplifies the installation and maintenance process. Now the external differences are pretty much it. Let's look at the internal differences. One of the biggest complaints about Mark I is that it leaks. It doesn't keep your nitrogen purge, nor is it water resistant. That being said, I have submerged my Mark I and battery pack in a pound while I was hiking in the woods, and I have not experienced any problem, no water in the system whatsoever. In Mark II, Argus have taken feedback from opt for night solutions and sealed the entire system, including the battery compartment. Now the Mark II can be properly purged and provide significant water resistance. Now the biggest improvement on Mark II is its tube compatibility and manual gain control feature. Tube contacts on the Mark I are simple. It's just two pocket pins to power up 10160 tubes or converted fixed gain 11769 tubes. Circuits on the Mark II now can be configured to take 10160 tubes, 10160 variable gain tubes, which have the third contact in between them and 11769 tubes with pigtail from essentially every manufacturer. By adding the third pocket pin in the middle, you can now use the manual gain control on variable gain 10160 tubes. Or if you have a 11769 tube with a pigtail, you will need to remove the pigtail and jump wires from the tube to the circuit board. And Argus provides a diagram and instruction of configurations for different tubes. As far as I know, the 1431 is the only offering in its price range that offers such feature. This is a very versatile feature, especially for those who upgrade from POS14 systems. These POS14 systems often have 11769 pigtail tubes. With Mark II, they have the option to keep the manual control function without sacrificing tube's performance. The Mark II housing itself weighs about the same as the RMVG, right around 6.8 ounces. Without the improvement done on the circuit board, the addition of air illuminator and the ceiling, the Mark II bridge is actually only 0.3 ounces heavier than the Mark I. Although 1431 is not a super lightweight housing, recently we have built a few systems for our partner using Carson's industry optics and these systems have an average weight around 25.5 ounces. But with some lightweight optics, like the RPO objective lens on eyepieces and the op for night solutions printed eyepiece housings, we can easily bring the weight down to less than 17 ounces, which is pretty close to the 16 ounces of the POS31. My personal Mark I unit with RPO objective lens, Carson's mill spec eyepiece with op, op for night solutions printed housing weighs right around 18.2 ounces, which is already pretty light for binocular system. The Argus battery pack with 4 AA batteries weighs around 6 ounces. Some early production units have oversized threads on the parts, making eyepiece installation and collamination really hard. But with this latest batch I have worked on, I have not experienced such problem. We have extensively used both Mark I and Mark II units in Ohio wintertime when it's well below 0 degree Fahrenheit, and in Michigan desert when it's over 100 degrees. We have bumped these units into optics when passively aiming, and into barricades when doing some drills. So far, we have not experienced any reliability issue about these 1431 housings. Our neighbor in the north, Up for Night Solutions, have done extensive weather resistant tests on these units. If you are interested, please check their Instagram page. 
for twelve hundred dollars, you get articulation, tube compatibility, IR flood, tube protection, and the ability to connect auxiliary battery pack all in one rugged package. Diesel's tactical concepts will keep testing these housings, and will keep you updated if anything worth noting happens. If you have any questions or just want to know more about this housing, please leave a comment down below. Thank you very much and stay safe.